Good morning everybody, DC here. It's the uh, 3rd of the 11th, 2020, and we're looking at magnet, magnets <laughs> and dielectric uh, equal space. Um, I've made a bit of a discovery here, and I'd welcome any feedback you can give me. Um, just to set the scene, um, I'm working with this machine that I've got on the bench here. I call it Autogen, because it, it seems to be generating potential. And uh, this morning, I've got my assistant over here, Sarah. Wave to the camera, Sarah. That's Sarah. She's got to switch the light on and off for me. Thanks, Sarah, for, for doing this. But not yet. I'll give you a shout in a minute. So I've got a little LED light on here to give a bit of background light because I'm dealing with high voltage and I don't want to get uh, any shocks. But anyway, here we go. Um, so um, magnets, uh, dielectric, equal space. Um Working from the uh, Tesla uh, spark gap, Nikola Tesla suggested that a spark at the spark gap, that it was, he called it an event. And I think he was right, because it's an event in the ether. And that's what's got me thinking along this autogen line. And so I'm looking at some two or three things together here. I'm looking at the spark gap, uh, a magnet, and our sun. And what's the, there's a common denominator, which is obviously the ether, which is space. Um, so I'm looking at all three. Con there's a connection, is what I'm trying to say. With Nikola Tesla's spark gap, if we start here, you have potential either side. And the bigger the potential, the, 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 the spark jumps at the, at the dielectric when the dielectric gives way and lets... Let's a spark of potential jump across. If we look at a bar magnet with just a second, with a bar magnet with uh, a north and a south, that's one bar magnet, and a north and a south and another bar magnet. But when you join the two magnets up together, they form a, another complete magnet. So when you break the magnet, um, the, there's a there's a, the dielectric wavers it goes it can either go um up or down depending <laughs> depending and so i'm looking at how the dielectric works in the magnetic field as well as the the magnetic field of the spark gap but also in relation to the, our sun and um you know the, our sun has got a north pole and a south pole magnetic wise and it also must have a dielectric as well. So I'm looking at um, the dielectric being space. So the two components really in space are dielectric and magnetic. There's just two components. And I've made a, a discovery with uh, the machine on the bench and the machine on the bench, I'll show you here. It's just steel, uh, steel scaffold tubes here. And I've got a fluorescent tube running through it. So the fluorescent tube runs through. And it's you can see it here. There, at the other end. And the centre tube here, I've actually uh, I've put in a UV tube. Trying to get a little bit more excitement of the energy in, from the inside, from the collisions. Um, so really it's a very simple setup we've got a power source power source around about 12 volts controller dc motor a spark gap here spark gap which is a contact breaker which is really just a a wheel which goes round and there's, there's, there's it's insulated but there's lots of little contact points on there which make and break and um, a transformer here so the make and break makes a spark basically and the potential of that spark which is a pulse a pulse of about 30,000 volts through the spark tube <clears throat> very very simple setup so all we've got in here is a pulse going 30,000 volts 30,000 volts and it flashes the tube although you won't see the flash in the tube because it's a UV tube but it does flash but the other tubes flash as well so that's the setup. Um, 
what I what I should just show you really is that I've got this this wire here which runs over to where Sarah is and it doesn't connect on anything it's just it's four meters of wire here and at this point here I've got a, a voltage sensor it's a 240 volt sensor but it it it, it it actually picks up on electromagnetic waves. So all I've done is tied this this four meters of ordinary cable, uh, I think it's 1.5 cable, to it, and I've put a little clip on the end here. And what we're going to do here is I'm just I'm just going to touch here the scaffold tube there, and I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to hold it away with a spark with a gap. And hopefully you'll 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 see a spark jump across. Now the spark jumps jumps across from nowhere because it's not connected to anything. But as as I actually physically touch the sca the steel scaffold tube there, it makes connection, and you'll hear the buzzer go off, which means obviously that it, it's magnetic. It's getting a magnetic signal. But if I just pull that off a little bit and and a spark will jump across, but there's no signal coming at, at the other point, which I thought there would have been a signal. This is my discovery that the static um, without magnetic. So what my discovery is, is I think the static is the dielectric. And that's it. The static's the dielectric. Anyway, without further ado, we'll just go back to this board. <sighs> and so we've discussed the gap, we've discussed the gap, we've discussed, discussed the magnet and what I just draw your attention to there on the magnet is that the dielectric, it does something at this point here and I think what it does, it actually, um, the dielectric is the common denominator. It, it can flow in and out. So it's the insulator which can flow in and out of a magnet. And it's obviously the dielectric plane uh, relates to the, our sun. And I'm trying to relate it to the, the machine that I've got on the, on the bench here, Autogen. So if you can imagine, round this steel tube here is the ether which I've shown in green here is the dielectric and basically the setup I've got is I've called it a battery but it's power source a spark gap a transformer 30,000 volts and all we're doing is pumping 30,000 volts through this tube in the middle so the potential is pulsed down down here but it's got nowhere to go except in the ether and I think what it does to the ether, it pressurizes the ether. So it, it but it, the ether resists it and it, it collapses. <laughs> so if you can imagine you've got 30,000 volts with nowhere to go here at the end of the fluorescent tube, stop. And then the flux or feel goes out and it stops. You can't go any further until the dielectric pushes it back. So what I think that's happening along this wire here is what it demonstrates is that the static is the ether. Uh, if you just make a note of this, this is my discovery, is that the static equals the dielectric. Um, so when you see the spark and no sound, you're seeing the dielectric. That's my opinion anyway. Anyway, without further ado, we'll have a switch on and see how we go on. Um, I hope you like this video, and if you've got any comments, you're quite welcome to make them. And uh, we'll see how we go on. Right, let's switch it on. Around about 12 volts. I don't know whether you can see it, but there's, there's the spark gap. So it's pulsing 30,000 volts at the tube here. We'll take this wire, which is the four meter wire. Right, Sarah, you can put, put the light off now. Thanks, Sarah. 
I'll just have to let my eyes adjust, otherwise I'll be killing myself here with this voltage. Now, if you look closely, you'll see a spark, but no, no sound. Right? Because I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. The spark's jumping across from the wire. Now I'm going to touch the steel now. Now that's touching the steel, really hard on the steel. It's sparking a little bit. Right. Now I'm going to take take it off. And now it's it's sparking, but not doing the. Anyway, that's my discovery, folks. And uh, so you can see the 30,000 volts is going down these tubes, yeah, with nowhere to go. So the dielectric's holding it back, but the dielectric's are static. Got to be. That's my discovery, folks. Hope you like light on, sir. That's that's my discovery at this this point here. That, that it, it can spark, but it doesn't. It, it's not a magnetic spark. It's a static spark. Thanks very much. Uh, I hope you like this video. I don't think I've been particularly clear on everything, so I might have to do another one to explain this. But there you go. This is DC signing out, and if you've enjoyed it, thumbs up or whatever. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hope to come back with more info as regard this discovery. Many thanks. DC signing out.